I would like to open our panel and by giving, first of all, the floor to uh, Ms. Rajana Ducard de Ponte from the Committee of Uberat Independence and President of the Pre Nations of Libya. You're welcome. Hello. Uh, my name is Rajana Ducard de Ponte. I'm a co chair of the uh, democratic movement Buryat Mongol FFN and the president of the Pre Nations League. Uh, it's a great honor and pr privilege uh, for me to take part in the joint event of Jamestown Foundation and uh, the Free Nations of Post-Russia Forum, uh, Russia's Rupture and Western Policy. The history of the Buryat people under Russia has been a litany of uh, trials and losses, of lives, lands, resources, culture, and language taken away by the empire a history of enormous pressure and resilience, of persistent and continuous struggle for existence. Throughout history, the Russian state has pursued a deliberate policy of reducing the number of non-Russian indigenous peoples in the occupied lands. Since the end of the 19th century, uh, the Buryat demography was affected by the Stalipin reform, the First and Second World Wars, um, the civil war, collectivization, industrialization, uh, the division of the Buryat Mongolian Republic in 1937, and the Stalinist repressions. Uh, Buryatia has over 700 explored deposits of various minerals, including gold, uranium, tungsten, beryllium, and molybdenum. Yet it is ranked among the poorest regions in the country. Moscow takes all this wealth. I'll, I'll give just one example. The highest quality jade deposits in Buryatia belonged to the Ivenki Artel de Lacha. In 1994, it received a license for mining in the north of Buryatia. Jade began to bring good profits to the Artel which attracted the attention of the federal authorities to it. In 2012, Rostec, with the help of the Russian Jade Company, whose personnel consisted of FSB officials, squeezed out the deposits from Delacha. In 2014, the Russian Jade Company uh, was replaced by the Transbaikal Mining Enterprise, which was also connected to FSB. At the end of July 2023, a shooting incident occurred on the territory of the Ospinska Jade deposit in the Oka region of Buryatia. In a video that appeared on the internet on September 2nd, people who look like private security officers shoot at an unarmed man. Jade is also fossicked in riverbeds and valleys of the South Island in New Zealand. In the late 1990s, the New Zealand government vested ownership and guardianship of all Punami Jade to the South Island tribe of Ngai Tahu. In Buryatia, the natives robbed by Moscow are forced to become illegal diggers on their own land and like 300 years ago, die at the hands of armed robbers who appropriated their natural resources. Lake Baikal, is a sacred sea for the Buryat people. It is the deepest lake in the world, containing 20% of the planet's freshwater reserves. Uncontrolled logging and pollution has brought Baikal to the brink of an environmental disaster. Since Russia's full-scale inv invasion of Ukraine, Buryatia has faced disproportionate losses in the war. Even though Buryats make up only 0.3% of the population of Russia. They form 2.8% of the official war debt, a figure that means that the war is costing our future as a nation, just as Putin is trying to take away the future from Ukraine. So what needs to be done to liberate Buryatia and help ensure its development? Russia will disintegrate not only because we want it, but because the time has come. The process of collapse of the empire is irreversible. The victory of Ukraine 
is imperative not only for the sovereignty of our nations, but also for the world security. We call on the world leaders to mobilize all efforts to ensure this victory. Russia is functioning because the propaganda and uh, Siloviki hold it together. Wagner mutiny has shown how thin Russia's defenses are. Russian opposition leaders hoping to seize the power after the collapse of the regime do not have a long-term uh, political program. Once the thaw is proclaimed, the system will fall apart. This has been the pattern in the Russian history for at least two centuries. The rise of hawks or failed anti-Putin uh, coup would lead to preserving the current imperial system and re-escalating the war in Ukraine. This scenario may occur if the West would strive to keep Russia unified at all costs. Another realistic scenario is the para parade of sovereignties in which national republics assert their independence, fueling Russian imperialistic chauvinism and eventually leading to a civil war. The uncontrolled process of collapse bring unacceptable risks of nuclear weapon pr proliferation and humanitarian crisis. The only type of plan to ensure sustainable global peace is the controlled dissolution or reconstruction of post-imperial space. A series of steps is required to increase the chance of positive change in post-Russia. First, support should be given to the independence movement of the captured nations of the Russian Federation. The empowering of the Russian so-called liberal opposition will lead only to either the scenario of consolidation of the hawks or the scenario of chaos. Diplomatic relations should be built with the newly independent states in advance. The neighboring and culturally related countries such as Ukraine, the Baltic states, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Turkey, and the global leaders must be interested to take part in the reconstruction of the ex-Russian space in order to sustain their interests and expand influence. Secondly, it is necessary to explain to Western societies that the risk of continuation of the war and the risks of uncontrolled chaos in Russia are unacceptable. And thus, the only option is the controlled reconstruction of a post-imperial space. Thirdly, the world community should insist on key reconstruction principles based on the United Nations ones. Denuclearization, peaceful resolution of disputes, protection of rights for all citizens, and accountability for war crimes. These principles are already included in the Charter, Freedom and Independence, signed by the members of the National Liberation Movements United in the Free Nations League on April 6, 2024, at the first Congress of the Free Nations League in Estonia. The captive nations have to be given the opportunity for self-determination and free choice of their geopolitical vector. <laughs>